This is why you need power. The time of ministering without power is over. It is time to walk with the power of God. Yes. It's very simple for me. I only do what the Lord says to do. If he gives you something to do, and you do it the way he tells you to do it, you will see what he gave you to be effective. So for me, it's seeing people's lives change. That's all I want. We are a church that believes the Word of God like to the T. So when the Word says that the impossible with man is made possible with God, that is the difference I think that a lot of us have not yet tapped into, is that impossibility made possible with by just with walking with Him, just obeying Him, and just trusting that if He has given us vision, to do this work, then he will provide every step of the way, and he most certainly has. This is where it all, it all started, and uh, when people wonder like where we came from, this was birthed but truly by God. It wasn't by man. It wasn't by, we didn't, I mean, we, there was no thinking about it because we didn't start it, you know, it was God that wanted to do it. And God just used uh, my, my mother and father as, as, um, as vessels to get what he wanted started. Uh, you see, you can be born again, but you're still carnal. Right, right. Yeah. And listen to what he goes ahead to show them that he's carnal, they are carnal. He said, why is there quarreling among you? Wow. Meaning to quarrel is a fleshly thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you steal everything that somebody does, you're ready to go, hey, how could you say that about me? You are carnal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If there's still division among you, yeah. oh me, I'm sh Prophet Love is the one, another one, T.T. Jakes is the one. Carnal. What you're doing is you're being carnal. Right. Right. Me, I'm not representing myself, I'm representing Jesus. Right. If, you are, if you are spiritual, you will see beyond this guy. Amen. Amen. You will Amen. see the guy who Amen. sent him. Yeah. 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 Amen. But those who are carnal will be like, Brother Lovey makes me feel it because of the way he speaks. I wasn't thinking about preaching or anything. I was focused on music. I love God, I pray, but I wasn't thinking about any of that. Then one night when I was praying, he appeared to me here um, in that other room. What happened was um, I'm praying and a small, like it, it looked like a flashlight, but a very strong f flashlight was coming from the ceiling to the ground. And I was like, for a minute, I was like, wait, what? What is that? Then he just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then I felt his presence. And then there was a man in the light and that was the Lord. And then he spoke to me many things. And that's when he told me that um, I want you to start preaching on Thursday night. You do what I tell you. I will bring people. You don't worry about getting anyone. I just want you to preach. Block out every Thursday from today because the work that I showed you that you're going to do as a child will begin here. After I came out of the encounter, in the morning I told um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Onyango that uh, uh, on Thursdays I'm gonna start prayer in the house. They were like, okay. I was like, yeah, God, the Lord appeared to me and told me to do that. And then Thursday nights began and people would say Bible study. I never had a name for it. Honestly, I don't know where people came from. Uh, people just, whoever came told another person that told another person. I didn't have a Facebook, I didn't have anything. In fact, I was trying to keep the church thing undercover as much as possible because I was still producing music. So I didn't know how that was going to be taken. So that's kind of where it all started. Some people sit on the couch, many were on the floor, 
somewhere in the fireplace. This piano was given to me by Calvin, my son Calvin. <laughs> Calvin is the one who gave this one, if I can remember. Was it this one? Yeah. yeah. One of them, yeah. So yeah. that's when Mike used to play there. We'll have people everywhere in this living room. Like when I tell you everywhere, everywhere. There were people in, the, in, in this hallway all across this place was full of people. This whole area was full of people. This room in here that we used to call the dancing room, this was full of people. This was full of people. This literally the walkway was full of people. And guess what? <laughs> even, even the way to the bedrooms was full of people. Some people literally standing by the toilet here, by the, by, by the, by the bathroom right here because all this was full of people. And then to even make it worse, the kitchen was full of people. Yeah. Everywhere in the house had people everywhere. Like this place was packed, packed with people. And it didn't make sense. And the worst thing, remember, we're in, we're in, we're in the valley. So the summers were brutal. Yeah. Like we're talking about like really hot. And somehow it was like always the summers, the AC will kind of break. Yeah. People didn't care. People were packed everywhere. Then we started using the studio speakers to put so that we can get sound yeah. to the other side because there was just too many people. So this is where it started. And we'll have like the parking was so bad that the neighbors started complaining. Boy, the police yeah. started coming. You remember those? Oh yeah. my God, it was too much. When I look at how God built us up from here, and again, I'm saying it truthfully, we outgrew this house. We moved to victory when God told us to. We outgrew that. We got the new church in Simi, the building, our first building. We've outgrown that. And then now God is sending us out. thing is we are grateful to partake of what God is doing on earth. That's the main thing I can say. It's like we, we have been chosen for a special assignment as a people, as a family, as Revelation Church, as me, myself. And um, God is just fulfilling what He desires to fulfill. It feels like forever ago at this point. We just remembered noticing that every time that we would call for who came from out of state, who came from out of the country, it was this overwhelming population of our church that would step forward. Having that mentality that we are attracting and living out our mission, touching lives all over the world was awe striking, to be honest. Then when the idea of Revelation Nights came about, it became more about how do we reach those people that aren't able to make this trip all the way to Los Angeles. And that's where we started. Dallas was just the beginning of everything for us, and I think that was us believing that what God had given was not void. It wasn't void just because we were outside of California. It wasn't void because we entered into a new state and new territory. He had his hand on it all along, and that's what we encountered. From Dallas came Miami, and those, those steps were just the ability to Say yes. Okay, Lord, that's where it is. That's what you're showing us. Okay, we're going to make it happen. When I tell you I'm just so blown away, I'm so excited about being here for uh, Dr. Lovey, Papa. <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're here to praise God. See Lovey. We're excited. This is the opportunity, not just this event here in Miami, but also throughout the world. Wherever Pastor uh, Prophet Lovey goes, it's going to be a great blessing for every person who comes and it's just amazing and exciting. The people who reserved for Miami was way more than the arena was going to accommodate. That people are calling the arena and the arena was complaining, calling us like, yo, how are we gonna know 
how many people are coming because this is the most people we have ever seen in this convention center. And remember, concerts have happened there. So they were really thrown off, like, what are you guys going to do here? It did not make sense to them. Any evil spirit tormenting you, every evil spirit that has been coming after you, every demon that has been ruling over you, in the name of Jesus, I command you evil spirit to come out. I arrest every satanic power. Tell me about your experience. How was it um, coming to Revelation Nights? It was honestly amazing. I've been watching Prophet Lovi for the last six months, and I've been waiting to experience the move of God that will happen tonight here. So the experience was, I don't know, it was really amazing. Where God sends us, there will be impact, and Miami was just the next step to that impact. So when we came to Houston and there were 7,500 people, whew, the devil was mad. I'm just always moved by seeing people change, how many children were delivered, adults were delivered, people coming out of wheelchairs, people's life. That was the best part of it. You have to understand that. Jesus wants to touch people. He wants to reach people. When that happens, heaven rejoices, you know, God rejoices. I rejoice because I'm like, man, I just get to have the front seat to see this happen. But I'm not even the one doing it, but it's like the privilege to be there to see it happen is a big thing. It never gets old. Revelation Church is not just the Church of Los Angeles. It's not just the Church of America. It's the Church of the entire world. And I cannot wait to see, especially coming out of Houston, and that feels like ages ago. All of these feel like years and years, but it's been only a short amount of time. Those just speak to how much work God has entrusted this church and entrusted the leadership in this church to take to the world. I'm actually coming to London, October when? October 27, Revelation Night, London. Yeah. And go and sign up and whatever it takes to be there. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Rejoicing and dancing. I'm a billionaire. Hey, Shadabaya. Off to the UK. I come back on Wednesday. So when I come back to get running to the airport. Where's Andrew? I don't see. He already had he already had You don't have no We are getting ready for Revelation Nights. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to look at the venue now and Europe here I come.